Right. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, Monday, Monday evening, if you're in the UK or in GMT time zone. So first of all, a warm welcome. I, I believe we are multi-streaming this one across to Getter, to Twitter, to Rumble, and even as a tribute to our forthcoming guest, um, uh, to YouTube. Yeah, we're actually going to YouTube. We're going into the belly of the beast. So hello to all my YouTube friends. I see you over there. Uh, Chris, Leslie, and so on. So thanks very much for being here. Hey, listen, so we've got um, a lot of stuff we want to get through tonight. This will be the only live show of the week until we get to our final live show, which, as you know, is in London on Friday um, with uh, Lawrence Fox, Calvin Robinson, myself, and Peter McKenna, uh, and we are, uh, Peter Michael Vanner, rather, and we are uh, hoping to have a great night there. So uh, I, I know some of you are coming along, so I look forward to uh, to meeting you in person on, on, on Friday evening. So um, this is the digital version. You get the in-the-flesh version on Friday night. Right, so before we go any further, let's just play our ad from our sponsor, because without sponsors, life is even more difficult than it is. So um, Quantum Hypno, uh, play the ad, and then we will bring in on our special guest. Go. Quantum Hypno is a transformative approach that connects with the superconscious through the power of hypnosis. I take the time to get to know you and create a relaxed setting where you can share your life story. There's no rush or time pressure involved. During the hypnosis session, you'll experience a natural and profound connection with the superconscious, accessing healing, wisdom, and the answers that you've been seeking throughout your life. Envision the ability to travel through time and space, recovering lost knowledge and exploring the universe. This life-changing work has already helped thousands of people dealing with addictions, trauma, or a sense of being lost, enabling them to move forward in the right direction. I've worked with people from all walks of life. So what are you waiting for? Yeah, there you go, there's a lion. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, you'll get to see Sarah as well, Quantum Hypno, on, uh, on on Friday night in London town as well. Right, without any further ado, he sat there very patiently in the background as I've gone through my waffle, so I do appreciate that. And uh, of course, he's a friend of the show, he's been on with me before, and it's absolutely brilliant to have him back. Welcome, please, Mr. Alistair Williams. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Alistair. Hello. David. Good, to see, good to see you again, Alistair. And I should start off by congratulations, 2023 Comedian of the Year. Listen, I should start by congratulating you on that introduction music. That is a great piece of introduction music. I really enjoyed that. Where did you get that from? I need to ask my producer. I didn't Man, you've got a great producer. Keep him. I Keep have. Him. That was slamming, that intro. I was, you did see me. I was actually legitimately dancing around there. <laughs> really enjoyed it. And yeah, yeah thanks, well, for, thanks for the big up. Yeah, appreciate it. No, no, it's it's it's, it's good. It's, I was really pleased, Alistair. This was at the comedy club, wasn't it? And um, it was at the comedy store. And uh, comedy store, the yeah. only way they let me back in the comedy store was the only reason I entered this competition is because the final was in the the comedy store and it was audience voted. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Because if, if there's anything else apart from an audience vote, I won't I won't win. You know, if it's a panel yeah. of yeah. industry experts, you know, these are the people that just bury me as far as they can. So the only reason the only reason I won this essentially is because they let the people, the general people who are in charge of laughing decide, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The audience. Imagine the the anarchy of letting the audience is is that is that in Leicester Square, Alistair? Where is that? Yeah. yeah. It's in Leicester Square. It's probably yeah. the best comedy club in the in the UK. Do, um, do you know I'm 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 gonna show my age. I remember going there way back in the late 80s remember around about 88 something like that yeah. and i remember there was people i think it was maybe jennifer saunders lexi yeah. sale I, i'm not sure if rick mail was there but i remember then it was it was it was quite quite a thing you know it uh but then it became quite established didn't it i yeah. think over the years i went there on my 18th birthday you know on my yeah. actual 18th birthday i went to the comedy store it was my favorite i just knew that i wanted to be in there and not being able to perform at the comedy store anymore was like one of the main things that I missed 
from the whole sort of cancellation thing. It's one of the main things that the world took away from me was performing mm. at the comedy store. So for a chance to go back and gig one last time at the comedy store, yeah. at this big final, I just really, it was really special for me to walk back in there, walk past the, the bouncers who sort of remember who I am, yeah. you know, and I walk past them all the time on the way to smaller comedy clubs down the road, you know, so to walk back in there one last time, walk out with a giant check and just be like, yeah. you know, nice one guys, you know, because you, you, you won't see me back in there again anymore for, for no, for no good reason, you know, really that no one's ever told me why I'm not allowed back there anymore. But, um, it was, but pathetic. it's pathetic. I mean, you, you, I mean, you, you, you won the top accolade, um, and, and the evidence that you I mean, fundamentally the job of a comedian is to make people laugh, hopefully right. think as well, but I mean, making people laugh. So I, I you know, it, it speaks to the nature of, I, I was thinking about this today about British comedy. I mean, whatever happened to British comedy? Did it, did it just all become captured or was it always captured, Alistair? What do you think? The same thing that happened to British architecture. You know what I'm saying? The same thing that happened mm. to the film industry. Mm. The same thing that happened to, you, you name it. Have you ever seen a McDonald's, what they look like now compared to what they used to look like? I do, yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. They used to be uh, red and yellow and place you could take your kids. And now there's just the decor is literally graffiti to one where I live. You know, it's yeah. like everything's prison rape gray. You know, it's like horrible, joyless, soulless experience going to a McDonald's now. And it's the same thing with comedy. It's the comedy, same thing yeah. with film. It's the same yeah. thing with buildings, with architecture. You know, they're just horrible, soulless, soul destroying. It's not an accident, David. No. None of this is an accident. <laughs> And no. all the joy is being taken out of the world by, you know, I don't even want to get into who's doing it, but oh, it is can. being done. Yeah. It's yeah. not a big accident, you know, and I'm, I get on the nerves of the comedy industry, I think, because they deliberately won't sort of pick me or put me up or say that I'm any good. And, and as I get better and better and better, it becomes more obvious that, mm -hmm they're not looking for the best people because they're just completely sort of ignoring me, if that makes sense. Yeah, Which does. I kind of enjoy at this point, you know, I, it's like... You know, but the, th the thing is as well, all the comedians that you see on our TV screens, these are all regime comedians, aren't they? Yeah. Like, I think I 100%. Mean, yes and no. It's not like these guys are in, I know most of these guys, it's not like they're in like some club where they're like, okay, mm. we're going to manipulate the public or whatever. They're just not willing to step outside of the accepted little bubble of what you can say and, and what you yeah. can think. So they're not necessarily, you know, bad people or deliberately trying to miss, they no. just want to be in the game. They want to be on the TV. They want to, you know, they're trying to make a living. They're trying to be a comedian and they've, they've sacrificed a lot to be a comedian and they've got to get on this live at the Apollo and they're just, you know, they've got a lot to lose. And this is how yeah, the person yeah. that runs the entertainment industry keeps everyone in line. Everyone is desperate to stay on the gravy train and no one wants to upset the apple cart. But yeah. the problem with comedy is once you start doing that, you're not really doing comedy anymore. You know, you do. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, right. the whole point about comedy is yeah, 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 presumably, you I mean, you go for the, the target rich, uh, environments, but but you can't do that because if you do that, then you, you're going to be in trouble. You, you, you know, I mean, uh, I, I spoke to another comedian who I think you probably know. It's a she, and she was telling me just what you said, Alistair. That right. there, there's a lot of people in the in the co comedy industry, and they're not necessarily bought and paid for, mm. but they play the game because without that, there's no income, there's no profile. There's, yeah, there's yeah, which is the position, I, you know, that you fight. I would say almost none of them are, almost none of them are like bought and paid for. It's just yeah. the way the entertainment industry works is you have to, you have to go along, you have to play the game or you, you simply just won't be famous. But what's becoming really sad and obvious these days is it's mm -hmm. like, if you are willing to play the game and you are willing to do this, they make you a famous comedian before you can even, you know, make people laugh. And people yeah. are starting to notice. There's yeah. a great interview with Cat Williams where he calls out people like Kevin Hart, where he's like, no one's ever been to a sold out Kevin Hart show. No one has a memory of that. They just made this guy, they started putting him on the TV. They said, this guy's the most amazing comedian of all time. He's like, this guy's never been funny. And it's so true. And this, mm -hmm. Cat Williams is one of the few comedians that are out there 
that weren't willing to play the game. They're not willing to go along with it. But the guy's so funny that they can't just vanish him, you know. Mm. But most people, if you've heard of them, if they're famous, most of them are, are, are playing the game to some degree, you know. It's very hard to mm. get any sort of a profile. And it doesn't matter how well I do on the comedy circuit, how well I do in the rooms, how many people yeah. are laughing. They will never take my name and and broadcast it. So I'll always mm. be someone, doesn't matter how good I am, I'm never going to be able to bring a bunch of people in because they're not going to let loads of people find out about me. And it's almost reached a point where I'm, I'm, I don't even want to be like that famous. I'm not looking for exposure because yeah. I don't want to keep my head down. I don't want to mess with these people that run the entertainment industry in the world any more than I have to. You know, yeah. I do my thing. I leave yeah. them alone now. They sort of leave me alone now, and it's kind of a draw. I know what they're up to. I know who their real opponent is, and he's way bigger than me, and he doesn't need oh, yeah. my help. So we're yeah. in our own lane, if that makes yeah. sense. Oh, it totally makes sense. I, I totally get that. But, you know, it's strange because you talk about comedy and arts and just culture in general. I, I've got to say, I was driving uh, this afternoon in the car, yeah. and a song came on, and it was John Lennon's Imagine. John Lennon's Imagine from 1972, I think it was. Yeah. And the first line in that, and it's a very sort of, you know, it's very melodious, catchy. Imagine there is no heaven, Alistair. It's easy if you can. No hell below us, above us only sky. And oh. I was thinking to myself, you know, do you think people have been programmed going way back, even before we've woken up? Yes. And because th that struck me with Lennon, I thought, yeah, I, I see that. I see exactly what was going on there. Well, what, what, you know, how do you respond to something like that? From the very beginning of time, I mean, who do you think the Beatles were? I mean, the, what mm. we're being told is the Beatles were just they're four guys from Liverpool who just picked up guitars and they became yeah. world famous because they were so good at playing the little tunes. And yeah. now we know about being famous, what we know about being famous. There yes. isn't a chance in hell that that's the reason they were famous, because they could really play these guitars. They're what we call change agents. Yep. So before the Beatles, society was a certain way. And then after them, it's all these girls yeah. screaming, wah, you know, yeah. free love, drugs, LSD, yeah. Lucy in the Sky with diamonds. You know, yep. they actually took society and drove it in a specific way. And what I would say to people was, go back and watch entertainment from like, I don't know, like, the 40s or the 50s when it was so clean cut and it's all like yeah. right on the television i'm playing a little piano oh well done mrs <laughs> yeah. chubney Warren, yeah. whatever now yeah. it's just like disgusting I... glasses in your face you know yeah. just, just yeah. lust and just greed and it's just sin bro it's just yeah. horrible now and it was slowly done by the person who's doing all this slowly yeah. done over a period of uh hundred years let's say since the television was around or whatever but now mm. it's very very obvious it, the, in the entertainment industry if you look at like yeah i don't know like sam smith or some of these people they literally oh, yeah. like yeah. they dress like satan they do all this Ooh. stuff at the super yep. bowl they wear upside down crosses on their neck i mean i don't have to you know go outside of you know what you can see with your own eyes to tell you who these people worship and yep. who the opponent of humanity really is because it's not bill gates you know oh, no, no 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 masterminding this yeah no no he's he's just a minion but but yeah. but you're right and 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 i mean i've been around a, a long while and i've seen especially in the music industry um the descent has it, it's it's right off the cliff now as you say i mean it's it's grotesque uh, at, at every level and i think the word is satanic as well i mean you, sam smith you mentioned but it's, it's across the piece, everywhere yeah. you look, and it's in your face, isn't it, Alistair? Like, as you say, you don't really have to point it out. People can see with their own eyes that they're, boom, straight, straight at you. And I wonder, how does that impact young people? Because, you know, I guess they're the most impressionable, and they're yeah. seeing all this, you know, uh, sort of Baphomet worshipping uh, uh, pop people. Uh, and I think, w what is that doing to them? Well, hopefully some of them are sort of sort of pulling back from it and maybe being like, oh, mm. this is a bit this is a bit too much. But mm. you don't know. I mean, it's really down to parents in this day and age to yep. try and protect their children from this world. You know, yeah. when you look at how evil yeah. this world is, you know, it's really down to parents to sort of try and insulate them as much as they can from what we have become. And by we, I mean everyone. I mean like the mm. degradation yeah. of human character you know we talk a lot about 
London being unsafe, but it's not just London, is it? It's Paris, it's New York, it's, you know, Everywhere. people used to be able to walk down these streets safely because we had a sort of society and, you know, we had a sort of set of rules that everyone sort of adhered to. And now it's all, mm. it's all being, you know, deliberately eroded. But, but yeah, but do, do you not think it's interesting? I completely agree, obviously, but isn't it strange that the West, you know, New York, Paris, London, Rome, you name it, the, the, the massive degradation, but when you go to the East, Alistair, when you go to places like Japan or even yeah. India, it, the degradation is not anything like as obvious to me at any rate. And, right. and how do you explain that? Why is oh, it that, is, is it that. the Christian West has to be humiliated? What is it? But it's the, when you say like uh, the West is falling, but there's no set of Western ideals that we all had. It's not like all these countries were like, well, we're in the West, so let's start doing Westy things, right? <laughs> it was Christianity. Yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. Is what has been eroded. We used to believe mm -hmm. in treating others as they would have do unto you. And yep. we used to all read the Bible and we used to try and hit this higher level. We used to try and, you know, we used to mm -hmm. believe in God. We used to believe that God was watching everything we did and we had to be moral and we had to be yes. good. And, and that's, and it's that that we've, stopped uh we've stopped listening to god basically we don't believe yeah. in god anymore we're our own gods it's like do yep. as thou wilt you know yep. and this is why it is why it's not as bad in other places where you know maybe they didn't have that um mm. background to fall away from but i really really strongly strongly believe and it's happened so fast like a hundred years ago which is not a long time a hundred years ago no maybe 90 95 percent of people in in england for example believed in god you know it's not it's, that's not it's an, an incredible falling away when you think about it that yeah, it way is. yeah so, well, absolutely is yeah but then do you not think that if you take in, in say in england anyway if you look at the traditional church look at the church of england the anglican church yeah i mean it seems possessed to me these days when I right. see some of the things that go on within the Anglican Church, yeah. it's like a godless church, but yet it's the Church of England. You can't, I can't just go in a Church of England church. It's really hard to find a good mm. church these days. It's really hard to find yep. a church that's sticking to what the Bible says, because what the Bible says is not what modern culture says. Okay. You know, modern yep. culture says you need a pride flag on the wall and you have to be, you know, yep. They, they pretend like they're more loving. It's like, we're so tolerant, you know, and we're so loving and the Satan yeah. always disguises himself as an angel of light, but really they're just, mm -hmm. they're moving you away from what God says and they're moving you towards, why don't you decide as a, as a human being, you decide what's good and what's loving, mm -hmm. you know, and this mm -hmm. is the original sin is us. I want to decide what's good. I want to decide what's evil. Now we decide for ourselves what's good and what's evil. And what are we doing? We're taking little eight year old boys. We're turning them into girls. Yep. You know, like our, ci yep. our cities aren't safe. We're ruled by people who are completely dishonest, you know, mm -hmm. because there's no, there's no protection anymore. We don't, we're not following God's rules. In order to be protected by God, you have to follow his rules. It's like when your dad says, don't yep. play in the street. You have to follow his instructions. You don't play in the street. You don't get hit by a car. As soon as you stop reading the Bible, it's, it's not for God's benefit that you read the Bible and you do what he says. It's for your own benefit, yep. you know? And we yep. all used to do what God said. And we had this beautiful society. Marriages were something that people valued. Marriage is an institution created by God. Family is an institution created by God. These are things that God created and gave to us. And we've just forgotten about that because it's so long ago. You know, people don't yeah. even realize that marriage is a, is a thing that God gave us anymore. They think it's a legal thing. Yeah. You know, it's crazy how far we've fallen away from everything that made this society great. Yeah, and, and, and it's incredible that the darkness behind it. If you take, if we just jump across to the Irish Republic for a moment, I mean, they're having a referendum, I think it's next month, next month or two, and they're, they're amending their constitution. But get this, within that constitutional amendment they're making, Alistair, they're removing the word mother from the Irish constitution. They're redefining marriage to essentially mean different kinds of stable relationships. And, and you see it there as well. I mean, the, the, especially the Irish Republic was a very, even 40, 50 years ago, was a very traditional Catholic yeah. church built and con controlled as well um, society. That's all gone. It's all gone in 20 years. I, I find it amazing because I can remember what it was like. 
And now I see here's this country. They're wanting to get rid of mo the word mother, yep. abortion, now great cause of celebration, and marriage itself, Alistair, which is, I think, a central tenet of what kept us stable as a society. It can be, it can be anything at all. It doesn't matter. Love is love. Yeah, it's, it's not an accident. It's not an accident, no. that, you know, what's happening. There's a, we're in a period of a great falling away, as the Bible describes the period that we're living through, as a falling away from a, a, a sound position. And we used to have a sound position. We used to all agree, shared values. We, we mm. try and be good, moral people. And now we've fallen away to selfish. We're lovers of self rather than lovers of God. The Bible describes in the last days, people will be lovers of self rather than lovers of God. And you look at the way we behave, selfies, you know, it's so yeah, obvious to me, yeah. you know, yeah. and yeah. it's a great passage. I think it's in uh, Timothy, but God, God tells us all these things are going to be how men are in the final days. And you read off, you reel off this checklist and it's mm. everything that we are disobedient to parents, you know, dishonest, arrogant, you know, you, you yeah. reel them off and it's like, yeah. wow, he, God is describing exactly how we are now. You know, so that's the period of time I think we're in, David. I think we're in the great right. falling away mm. where things are going to get worse quite quickly, quite quickly, quite quickly. And then mm. the king returns. And, 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 and do, do, do you think, like, how do you see the, the trans issue um, on regarding this? Because it's, it's so weird in a sense. It's, it's become all, almost an article of faith now that we yeah. have to believe that men can become women and women can become men. Totally optional. And, and, it's, and It's the same thing, David. It's anti-God. God made them male and female. So now the world mm. tells you, oh, no, 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 no. Mm. You, that's not the case. You know, you don't, have to, you don't have to read very far into the Bible before you realize that everything, all mm. these modern agendas, down to the, you know, the green movement, yep. which is about, you know, you have to look after the planet and you're, you're less important than the planet. Well, the Bible says that God made this earth for you. And he put you in charge of this yeah. earth. Like you're the most important thing in the world, not yeah. the world. You know, the heaven and earth will pass away. Like, and but that's which is really the cause of a lot of this sickness that you see in young children, like young kids who are like, oh, I don't want to have children when I grow up because of you know the green agenda and yeah. because we're destroying the planet. It's it's inverting everything that God tells us for our own good is inverted, and that's yeah. just one basic thing. Is like yeah. if they can convince you that you're not even a man and you're not even a woman, they could start to just unravel the reality that that you live in. And, and you know what? I saw a story today, Alistair, and it was uh, came out from some source. I think it was the Resolution Foundation. But anyway, they were saying that young people, um, I think here in the UK, were uh, more depressed than they've ever been, and there, there was a uh, some a certain percentage of them you know just absolutely sort of miserable um they don't know what their lives are and i don't think that's accidental either i think no. that is absolutely inevitable and when you have you know if young kids go to through school and then to university and the woke agenda is shoved right down their throat and you know they're impressionable and stuff it doesn't surprise me that our kids or, or certainly some of them anyway or in this state, but it's, I find it so awful as a as a grandfather. I think it's awful when I can think of young like my little grandkids could be put into that indoctrination, and it angers me as well. To be fair, I I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But um, mm. if I didn't have my faith in God, yeah, and if I didn't have my kids in a church where they got so many friends, and they're you know, mm. I feel like I'm living in this kind of like little, little bubble that God gives me. And I live yeah, as a yeah. Christian and someone who has faith in God in this horrible world. And I know that the world's horrible and it's evil. And the reason why so many young people are depressed is because they can probably sense that, you know, that mm. they live in, mm. in this awful time. They don't really, they don't really understand that. Like I can remember how good McDonald's used to be. Now they just live yeah. in this kind of yeah. depressing gray, you know, lockdown masks, you know, all this stuff that they've lived through. I mean, they're living through look at the propaganda they're being slammed with every day. You know, and they don't even realize. So it's no mm. wonder that, that they're it's not really, you know, yeah. you know, mentally. But and, and the only, I know a lot of people watching this might not have faith in God, but it's the only thing that makes me able to just live a happy, full life in this world is knowing yeah. that not yeah. only 
it, not only does the Bible say exactly what's happening out there will happen, mm. but you know that I take faith from that because the Bible says in the last days the world is going to go disgusting. It's horrible. When I see the the world going disgusting and horrible, Shit. I don't think, yeah. oh no, I think, oh yeah, this Bible's true. I'm like, yeah. God told me this is going to happen, and the reason why God tells you this is going to happen is so you don't lose faith. You know, so you understand this is all part of God's plan. And unfortunately, this is the way that it needs to go. It, it needs to go this way in order that as many people as possible will wake up to the fact that this world is evil before the end. You know, it's really yeah. a, a mercy and a kindness that God yeah. is making the world reveal itself to you before it is too late. Well, well, talking of that, Ben, COVID seemed to mark a different um stage a step forward or whatever a transition because COVID came along as this unspeakable dark evil and it kind of came from nowhere really i suppose to be honest about it um and unlike yourself and and i know there's other people on this who follow me as well we've all kind of found a real comfort and a security and in in, in our christian faith because yes. when, when when you when you actually think about what they've gotten up to since 2020 it's kind of off the scale, Alistair, yeah. and it's the only word is, is like evil, I think. No biblical. other word can do. Biblical yeah. is a good word for biblical is a good word for what is happening. Yeah. And it's caused so many people to sort of awaken to yeah. hang on a second. This world that I that I thought I knew, it's actually way more sinister and way more evil than I thought. And there is no group of people mm. that are more crying out for answers than the awake community. This is a group of people that are really yeah. interested in hearing about God yep. because they can see the evil in this corner and they're like, so you're, wait a minute, so you're telling me yeah. that there is an opposite to this and he's on my side and everything's gonna be all right? I'm, I'm open, yeah. Yeah, they wanna hear about this. Yeah. And it's a yeah. shame that the real church, the church of Jesus Christ, not the church of England or all this yeah. nonsense, they don't make more of an effort to reach out to these people because they're tarred as like conspiracy theorists and whack mm. jobs and mm. you know we don't fit into normal society but you know what does the bible say about people that follow jesus do they fit into the normal society no they don't no, you know don't. so no. it's a shame for me that the church isn't doing more with this group of people who are crying out for for answers yeah you know? Because because our numbers have multiplied in the last four years, I think, as you said, the, I, I find this as well. The the awakened community, so to speak, is very open to the kind of conversations that we might have and the things that we will believe. You know, they they, they really are, um, and uh, and that's a plus. So it actually shows, even out of the the, the darkness of, of the COVID tyranny. Um, we, good things can happen as well, which of course again goes. We, we understand that's exactly what the Bible says is going to happen. But yes. but you've been for. I wanted to talk to you about. You, I mean, you've been very good. I I, I don't listen to that much because I'm too busy doing this stuff. Okay. But you're one of the ones that I do listen to because I do I do enjoy your stuff, Alistair. Oh yeah, and um, I mean you've been you. uh, on the. You're such. You're so on the target. But I'm, but I'm going to go through stuff and then I'm going to challenge you, right? I've got a Good. challenge coming for you. Let's so go. your stuff with uh, John Campbell, nurse doctor oh, John Campbell. I, I mean, Campbell. It, that's very good. It is very good. <laughs> um, you know, and, uh, and, and it's funny because I see your vocabulary is picked. I see other people parroting what you say. Uh, right. oh this is this is Alistair's uh, this is, is Twitter I think uh, no this is the vaccine is this the vaccination one? Oh this yeah my it's parody of the breathtaking documentary from the other side you know just taking their documentary and sort of you know a reaction to people that have had yeah. harms from the vaccines instead of the horrible COVID you know what I mean it's yeah, kind of yeah, propaganda, I was, this breathtaking documentary I saw about that. how horrible COVID was and how deadly it was. And I sort of flipped it around to how deadly the vaccines were and just did a voiceover. But, yeah. you know, it no, needs no, to be ridiculous. No one fought harder stuff. than Dr. No one fought harder than Dr. Rachel Oxford, whatever she called it up, uh, and, 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 and basically, yes, uh, fighting the, the great company, vaccinating. People have been talking about it today, Alistair. I've seen you get lots of, lots of positive feedback on that. But back to Campbell. I wanted to focus yes. on Campbell. Because the thing yeah. about Campbell is, all the stuff you say, I completely agree with. Mm. But then, I mean, there's some things I can't reconcile. See if you can help yeah. me with this. I mean, he obviously got huge ratings on YouTube where yeah. you and I are absolutely squashed. 
Yeah. I've been demonetized. It's impossible to grow. Say anything, you get a strike. So, and yeah. he yeah. managed to get millions, and that's so suspicious, right? Yes. There, there's, there's a clue. But then in 2023, he brought on Andrew Bridgen, and mm -hmm. they did a video together, and he got a strike, and it was taken down from YouTube. So, is is that just the game being played? What yes. is that, Alistair? Yeah, it's like, oh, he got a yellow card. It's like. Do you think if they really wanted to remove him, they would give him one yellow and then mm -hmm. he'd be right back to having six mm -hmm. million or whatever it is? If mm -hmm. they want to remove you, they just remove you, David, and they don't need to yeah. give you a warning and a first strike and a second strike. Like with me, they just gave me all the strikes. Bing, 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 bear, you're out of here. Yeah. You know, there was and yeah. for three year old videos, you know, like if yeah. anyone, anyone, I mean, anyone, anyone who is just absolutely flooring it on YouTube, anyone is being allowed to have this big platform yeah. and the enemy is very 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 intelligent you know the enemy which is who yeah. i believe is satan very yeah. intelligent and yeah. they don't just have their mainstream media network now they they know that some people are tapping out from this and they're yeah. like i'm gonna go and find an alternative guy so all the big alternative guys russell brand nd campbell they own them as well like what i don't know what to what degree these people are in on it, but Russell Brand's a great example. He's a Hollywood movie star, you know, with a 33 tattooed on his wrist. You know, he's not Shit. your friend. Shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's not. He's mm. so part of the establishment. Married to Katy Perry, MK Ultra Katy Perry. You're telling yeah. me the guy married to Katy Perry is a Hollywood movie star. He doesn't know anything about the way the world really works. He was mocking the Illuminati on Alan Carr, Chatty Man a few years ago you know he was openly oh it's all such a stupid conspiracy theory lol now he's pretending to be mr yellow beanie i'm your man on the inside listen to russell brand and they sweep up a lot of people they're not interested in the mainstream media but they recognize russell brand and he's he's my guy now russell brand will tell me what's going on but if i may david if i may um what is really going on here because people will say but they're doing a good job dr campbell and russell brand they're, they're waking people up I believe we're at a stage of the game where, and this is my hypothesis, you'll notice that the New World Order, the WEF, Klaus Schwab, you know, people are being, it's being quite obviously exposed, right? And what I believe, these people work with problem, reaction, solution. Yeah. They're exposing their New World Order, David, on purpose. So Klaus Schwab, for example, who dresses like a Bond villain and is very like, I will take all the money. You think yeah. that's them trying to hide? I will take all the money and I run the global WEF. It's dressed in a black spacesuit. <laughs> yeah, no, you think no. that's them trying to get away with it? Or is that them making it obvious? That's them making it obvious. Well, why mm. would they do that? They're exposing the new world order. They're exposing the way things really work. And then what they're going to do, I believe, is someone is going to come along, David, and they're going to sweep away all this evil that we can see. And he will unite the world under a fake banner of peace. And the Bible talks about this man. And mm. this is the man who you really need to fear because he will sweep away all this obvious evil. And he will seem like the most amazing guy with many false signs and wonders. And that's, I believe, the Antichrist. And that's, I believe, the timeline that we're in. Mm. And that's why I believe people like Russell Brand are being allowed to expose the evil and everyone should wake up and, oh, no, someone needs to save us. And the, the savior is coming, but it's not the true savior. It's the guy who's going to pretend to be the true savior. And that's my not complicated hypothesis, but that's what I the, the timeline that I believe we're in. And so you put out a video there very recently on Elon Musk. Yes. On Elon Musk. Uh, Elon, who likes to have the don the old Baphomet costume when he wants, but he's a totally super duper good guy. He's an A one good guy, and he's he's secured Twitter for us all. Yeah. I, I I was brought back from you know beyond oh, the yeah. digital grave. Such a good guy, a great guy, ready to put a chip. Oh, yeah, in your isn't brain. it? Yeah, he's yeah. Put a chip in your brain, Dave. What a great guy. I know. I know. And I he's know. a billionaire, so we can definitely trust him. And he's doing all this damage to the establishment, but they just got no way of shutting him down. He's just a maverick. He's out there. And they're all like, oh no, Elon Musk is exposing us all, but there's nothing we can do. Like yeah. if you ever get to that level of fame and you start exposing these people, you die. You go. Okay. Yeah. That's what happens to you. You die. Yeah. That's all yeah. that happens to you. You know, uh, unless God's protecting you in which, in which case you're fine. But 
you know, yeah. I mean, Elon yeah. Musk, it's really like everyone, but people want a savior. They want to hear, or they want someone to do something. They see how terrible the world is. Yeah. And if you don't true. have Jesus as a savior, if you don't have God looking after you, I understand why you're like, listen, I need to believe in Russell Brand. I need to believe in these people because I got no one else and I can see all the evil and I can't do anything about it. So I understand why people get really mad at me. And I've had, you know, other content creators that get really mad at me when I say, look, I don't believe that Russell Brand's a good guy because it's their guy, you know, that, and they don't want to mm. live in this world where no one is on their side. Yeah. But when you have faith in Christ and you read the Bible and you realize this is all part of God's plan, I don't need Russell Brand to put my hope in. Thank the Lord. You know, I don't Whoa. need to put my hope in Trump or anyone else. No. I, I, my blessed hope is in you know, is making yeah. his triumph and return. I don't need to put my faith in man, which is just as well because very few of these people are actually legitimately out to help you. But but you made, you made another really good point, though, that, you know, a, a lot of people are understandably very wary of mainstream media. So mm. in, in a sense, I think certainly some of them have been convinced that, you know, yeah, the mainstream, you do want to go near. But the point that you make, which I really love, is that, yes, but the alternative media, the alter, you know, the rumbles of this world and, and, and these other platforms, you got to watch there as well. I mean, you've been pretty, you've been really good. And uh, like, for example, Joe Rogan and uh, um, Goliath Slayer, what is it? Uh, Brett Vine oh, <laughs> Weinstein. <laughs> yep. and, and I agree with you. I completely agree with what you're saying. But I mean, but again, but it's so insidious the way they do that. They've, so mm. now, here's the alternative universe and you can buy into this plot where Joe Rogan and these and Weinstein and all these other guys, they're gonna sort it out. They're taking it to the man and they can get away with it. And, I mean, and you're right, Alistair, the minute you try to point at this and say, I don't think this is the way it works, you're, you're gonna be pilloried actually for saying yes. that because people mean, are desperate to believe in, in anything. Look, look at the amount of effort that they put into like CNN or something, right? Look at the mm -hmm. amount of effort they put in something like CNN to brainwash people and to keep them, yeah. you know, not living the truth, right? The reach of CNN is about 200,000 or something. It's pathetic. pathetic the reach yeah. of Joe Rogan's like, what, 40 million, 50 million, maybe 100 million? Mm -hmm. You don't think that they've had any sort of a conversation with him or you, you think that he's just this wild card that's running out there yeah. and they've got no control over him and there's nothing, they, the biggest podcast in the world, you think that's a blind spot that they have. The <laughs> biggest podcast in the world with all his Hollywood guests like Matthew McConaughey and Miley yeah. Cyrus and, you know, and the, the and Elon, two boys, you know. Elon's never off his podcast. Exactly. Elon's, you know, yeah. And they, they there's a, a great video by a guy called Matthew North. It's called Joe Rogan Exposed, and he breaks down all their sponsors mm. and stuff. He's dead now, by the way. Matthew I know, it's all that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It didn't yeah. stick around too long after this video. But I watched this long video, and I used to be a great fan of Joe Rogan. I used to dream of going on the Joe Rogan podcast. Mm -hmm. And now I just, uh, I, uh, ugh. I just, uh, there's no one. There's no one. There's no one massive that's come in to save you, basically, is what people need to to realize there's no the system isn't going to give you anyone that's going to defeat it it's it's mm. not going to work that way no no although how do you explain that? no i agree alistair i'm we're on the same page in this but the only thing i would say is if you go back to 2016 okay. how did trump get himself elected because i don't think oh. they wanted trump i don't think so I believe that as well, David. I believe that as well. And maybe that's maybe that is the case. Maybe it's the US military asked Trump to run and you know, he's an anti globalist and all that. And you know, it's and I used to really I used to put all my stocks in Trump and I used to believe that the white yeah. hats were in control and they were gonna save us and this and that. But yeah. it's just it's been too long, David. You know, yeah. it's been too long mm. that you know, the, the the bad guys have been in charge that, that I can see any sort of way that you know that there's really a guy like trump and he's off the radar and he's going to help us like it, i just don't yeah. see that but it completely fooled me you know i used to have my trump hat and i used to do my live streams and i used to believe like oh there's a good guy that we can vote for and if the good guy gets if the good if we vote for the good guy the bad guys will lose now it's like there's no there's no good <laughs> guy you can vote so for guys. that's yeah. that's childish to me now that that you can yeah. vote your way out of this it's like it's like which globalist do you want? The one with the blue tie or the red tie? That is the well, vote that you have now. Yeah. And if you take the UK at this point, as we're recording this this evening, I mean, and I've gone on and on about the uni party. It's red at one end, blue at the other. It's the same. It's all the same. You have no choice. 
British people waking up, there, there's literally no choice. And that includes, I think, and this annoys some people when I mm. said, Alistair, yeah. reform. I consider yeah. reform. I consider yep. people like Tice and um, Farage to be Judas goats. That's that's yep. what, what I think. Same. But people get annoyed when you say that. But but I no, think I so. Think right. Because the system, it's, the same, it's what you're saying. The system is not going to let itself be somehow turned around. It doesn't no. work that way. It has to go it's, ultimately into sort of a cataclysm and then it'll be sorted out i think it's not a political problem we're having okay no. it's a spiritual problem we're having like yeah. the problem in covid wasn't politics was it it was evil it yeah. was like people are doing stuff that's really evil like not letting uh parents see their dying children you know yeah. because of covid yeah. it's like you cannot explain that from a from a biology biological point of view you can't yeah. no virus can generate that amount of evil you know it is a spiritual war that we're in here yeah and because it's a spiritual problem there's only a spiritual way out there's only turning to good there's no the guy with the red tie is going to fix everything it's uh, that's yeah. not the problem that you voted for the wrong guy that's not the problem the problem is you know, this whole system is evil. Human character without God is evil. You leave us to our own devices and it gets really, really bad, really quite quickly, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 no, Alistair, that, that, that is correct. And I mean, I know people like Bob Moran and whatnot have pointed out it, it is a spiritual war. I think my friends in the Freds brought out a single a spiritual war, a spiritual warfare. We, 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 I think, we do figure that but it's it's it is the scale of the evil like going back to the COVID thing again yeah. you know the fact that they kept uh parents away from well for example their elderly parents you weren't allowed to go and visit people in care homes and the bit that gets me is a lot of like those in the caring professions 100 percent went with that and and you know doctors nurses they absolutely colluded in the you know in in, in isolating and ultimately, you know, those those elderly folks died, yeah. a, a, you know, a horrible death in their own. And is that, do you think that is because what was driving that cruelty in those doctors and nurses? Was it Satan? What was it? I think with most people, um, I think we've reached the point in the world now where most people, they don't want to do anything evil. They don't want to do anything evil. They just want to put their head down and they just, yeah. they don't want to make any way. They just want to go along with... You know, they just they don't want to make any sort of moral decision. They just and they don't want to live in the world that I live in, that you live in, David. They don't mm. want to live in a world mm. where the government are pushing this harmful injection on everyone and bullying them mm. with the media. And they don't want to live in that world. And I can't say that I can blame them. However, yeah. I believe we're reaching a point in the world where what's going on is so evil that just to not do anything is going to be a heinous, heinous crime. Just to sit back and go, I'm not going to oppose this, is in itself evil. Because what is being done now is so bad and it's so wrong and it's so obviously wrong. But once mm. people have sort of decided, I'm not going to, it's willful sort of blindness. It's like, I'm not going to see anything evil. I don't want to see that, yeah. yeah. Right? And the yeah. psychological traps are very, that the enemy's laid are very clever. It's like once you've, once you've had four vaccines and six boosters, in order for you to come back now, yeah. You're going to have to admit to yourself, okay, I made the wrong decision. I was conned. No one wants, wants to, to do that. that. No one wants no. to think they've got this horrible poison no. in their body. No. You know, they don't want to be convinced of that. And the Bible says you need the eyes to see and the ears to hear. You have to want to see the way the world really is. You know, mm. you have to want to see it. And the first group of people that God says will never reach heaven are cowards. And, and it's sad to say this, but it takes it takes a lot of bravery to see the world for what it is. And, you know, there's a lot of people yeah. that are sleepwalking into evil, basically. Oh, yeah. Pe people have said to me, uh, you know, would, would it not be better if you just if you just look the other way? If, if you just, you know, if, if you didn't keep going on about the things you go on about and just take an easy life. But to me, that's a shortcut to hell. I don't, I don't want to take that easy life. I don't yeah. want to go there. I really don't. Yeah. So um, so I think, yeah, we are in this spiritual warfare. And I think you're right, Alistair. People, people probably aren't instinctively evil. They just don't want to, they don't want to go there. 
but but I think yeah, ultimately, too. like I'll tell you, for example, we're going to have an election this year in the UK, and again, the, yeah. the red end of the uni party gets in, and all I see is that's going to fast track even more immorality, more degeneracy, as far as I can yeah, see, yeah. anyway, based on everything yeah. I've heard from Stormer and and the gang. So we look back on the Zunak johnson years so that was how was the high ground we were on then because oh, yeah. we're going to be so far gone but again that might be good because that might wake more people up yeah i mean very much so very much so that it might do and i'm sure it will i mean this is the reason why these things are being allowed to happen mm. so that people will people will wake up you know people will sort of you know reel back from the world and be like i don't want anything to do with this what else what else is out yeah. there you know, yeah. and I think that's I think that's the the period of history that God's chosen for us to live in, you know. And I, for one, am enjoying it. You know, I'm enjoying this. I mean, I mean, people might well, think that having faith in God is nothing to be nothing, but look how much fun I'm having here. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's the old maxim: "What a time to be alive!" What a time well, to be yeah, alive! Yeah, it, it is. It is. What a time it, to be alive. Yeah. I mean, you know, you said earlier, you feel like, oh, Alistair, your stuff is generally sort of on the money. It's kind of on. I believe, my personal belief is that God has created me to live in this time. And I believe yeah. that he's given me certain gifts and it's down to me to use them for, for God and his kingdom. And I look at the world and I look yeah. at what I'm good at. And I think God has got me down here to ridicule this evil yeah. Yeah. And, and poke fun. And it's like, yes, sir. Yes. And when I'm doing that, I'm having the most fun that, that I could possibly have. But in order to do that, you need to have faith that God will protect you and yeah. just sort of step out. But once you really believe that, you're unintimidated. You, they can't intimidate you. If you really believe that God is in charge of everything, and I believe that, I believe that not yeah. a sparrow shall fall to the ground unless my Father in heaven allows it, right? Yeah. So because I really believe that, it's impossible for you to intimidate me in the ways well you better not do that or else it's like anything that happens to me god has allowed it and i could I, you right. know i could get killed yeah right? but i believe that god has allowed that so because i believe that and and a lot of people you see who are standing up against this thing are christians uh, yeah. or they have faith in god because yeah. and this is what the bible teaches you you know it, a man that fears god doesn't fear any man you know and it's true if you really fear god no one on earth scares you because you just don't want to go against God. You don't care about someone that can kill you. You care about someone that can cast your soul into hell. You know, yeah. next to casting your soul into hell, what is anything that can happen to this world to me? It's it's yeah. nothing. And well, it, it, sorry, it, go on. Sorry, Alistair, you know what? It, it does show when you're doing those pieces, you know, like 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 some of the things we've talked about on on um, on John Campbell or on on mm. on Joe Rogan or on, on um, Elon Musk, I think it really flow it flows through you what what you're saying. You know, it, that's why I find it so. I mean, Thanks. it's great because it's kind of it is merciless at one level because it's so sharp, but that's what we need. We need that. We need and, and for people to wake up. I mean, you do have to prod people to waken them up and to see things as they are. And and some things are very hard. Like for example, the piece you did on Elon Musk. A lot of people see him as a white knight. He is the guy, and and they don't see all the, you know. So when you do the stuff that you do, which again I endorse a hundred percent, it uh, because I mean, I it dawned on me when I was brought back to Twitter. I thought, oh, this is great. I'm back again, yeah. and then instantly the brakes are put on you, and suddenly yeah. you realize I'm just in a I'm in a vacuum here. I might have a reasonable yeah. presence, but cannot grow, cannot do anything, yeah. and and I'm trapped. It's, yeah. it's a rat trap, so to speak. Yeah. It really is. And, and Musk presiding over it all with his C, with his World Economic Forum CEO. I mean, um, how do people need, not see that? They need a punch and a Judy show. You know, they need, in order for uh, their agenda yeah. to be, they need another side. So they're going to let people, they need somebody. They want the whole world going back and forward, divided the whole time. So they need some yeah. people to be opposing their agendas in order for people to constantly you know, be at war with each other. So they, they mm. do allow, you know, they want the conversation to continue. But unfortunately, most of the people that you think would be on the right side of things, they're just uh, they're some kind of puppet, essentially. Well, well, the point you made with Musk, which I mean, like, again, I, I think the same thing. He wants to put a chip in your brain. OK, he wants you all into electric vehicles, which mm -hmm just don't work and which make no sense and which are not about our future mobility. It's about right. keep, keeping it, you know, so 
it's kind of you know so how is he a hero well, like this is a, this is a strange version of a hero yeah, really strange version i you would know, also like, encourage yeah. people check out his ex-wife she's a musician called grimes check out her instagram check out some of the stuff that she's into and ask yourself if this is a you know uh how can i put this but it's quite a satanic vibe her music and her stuff like that you know and when you sort of really sort of as I did for a while, you dig deep into sort of these celebrities and yeah. sort of Hollywood culture and yeah. music culture. And you look at somebody like Grimes, I'm just gonna let people do their own research, right? Yeah. And you think, well, so he's married to her. They got a kid whose name is like X, Y, O, seven, yeah. like a yeah. barcode or something. You know, these people have to tell you who they are. Like with Elon Musk wearing the, the, the Satan's champion armor, you oh, know, yeah. in, his, in his profile picture. Yeah. You know, yep. his mom's got all these pictures, like, doing yes. this. Oh, she looks like yep. Cruella de Vil. Like, you know, you can get, get into who his dad was, who his mom was, like, how he got all his money. He's not just this bro. This, he's like a complete, like Joe Rogan. It's like, bro, he's this really cool genius guy, and he's so cool, bro. It's like, that's <laughs> not, that's the kind of thing that you're being given to believe. He's just this crazy, wacky genius, bro. It's like, okay, fine. I mean, you want to live in that world where everything's just so simple and wonderful and the wacky genius is coming to save you with the brain chips. Okay, go on then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that's why I, that, that's why your stuff works so well, Alistair. Because the thing, yeah, when you say it like that, the, the, what, what works best about your stuff is is it's the truth. And 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 you know the Bible says the truth will set us free. You know, and so when you say these things, I think it all totally makes sense to me. It it it, it explains what we see with our very eyes. Um, it's just that not enough people say it. That, that's the truth. Not enough people are saying this. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't want to call out Joe Rogan for different all kinds of reasons, or they don't want to have a go at Musk. You know, um, mm. and that's that, that's the problem. But I think we're in a different position because, in a sense, you know, you don't have a lot. To, I don't have that much to lose because they're taking so much from me. I, I don't care. I mean, yeah. Once you mm. realize, like me, like I, when you realize, like the somebody said to me the other day, and it's true, like this world is the closest thing a Christian will ever experience to hell, you know? And mm. vice mm. versa, this world is also the closest thing an atheist will experience to heaven. Like, if you don't have the, uh, mm. you know mm. you know what I mean? Like, for me, yeah. I'm living yeah. in this world, and it's so evil, and it's so awful, and, you know, I want to be with God, I want to be with Jesus, I want to be with, you know, in the sort of place that God wants me to be. So I'm getting through this life. It's not that I don't enjoy this life, I do, you know? But I see this world for what it is, and I see who's running this world, and I don't want any part of it. And not only that, the Bible says if this world hates you, to rejoice. You know, so when it's like, well, I'm going to lose this for saying that, or I'm going to lose this for saying that, that you know, God tells me, if, you, if this world hates you, remember that it hated Jesus first. It does, and yeah. That's yeah. one of my favorite lines from the Bible, because when you realize that, and I, and I read that line after I'd been canceled and all my friends didn't want anything to do with me anymore, and I'd, mm. I'd lost everything for trying to do the right thing. And mm. then I read that line in the Bible where it's like, you know, if, every, if the world hates you, remember that it, it hated Jesus. And I mm. realized that that was so true that well, Jesus only told us to love each other. And, you know, that's, that's yeah. what he told us to do. And yeah. we tortured, he got tortured to death. It's like... You know, if you're on the same path as that, if you if the world hates you, then you you kind of you you're on the same path as Jesus. And I, I never stop looking back from there, and I just keep looking for the truth. And people that go looking for the truth, I promise you, you'll find God. If you go looking for the truth in this world, that is where you end up. That's where I ended up. I never yeah. wanted to believe in God. I was just looking for the truth. And once you're on that road, I promise you that God's on the end of it. No, 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 I, I agree. I mean, that, that that is actually the ultimate point. Sort of, tr truth is revealed to us. I gotta say, I mean, when it comes to coping with this world and all the stuff, I mean, I guess I do a lot of stuff, you know, on 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 social media and podcasts and stuff, and covering a lot of daily issues. Is you know, and they're all they're all minor. They're none of them are that mega, I suppose. Yeah. But. But th th they're kind of cancerous at another level. They're toxic. It's toxic yes. stuff. So the comfort I get, my com point of comfort is in my Bible. That's yeah. where I get my yeah. comfort because yeah. nothing can beat that. That that yeah. that that is you know um, that that's the kryptonite to the evil in this world. You know. So yes. I, I take I take a comfort from that and and think and you know the stuff we're we're talking about, Alistair. I, I think definitely 
uh, faith, a uh, Christian faith, is 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 become more and more and more to the fore in in a certain group of us. And I think it's brilliant to see. And, I, and honestly, I mean, it's really, it's it's really great to see it. And I wish more. And and I think maybe we set examples that then other people sort of maybe buy into us a wee bit, and then they'll investigate and they'll find where they need to be. I've had a lot of people message me that say, "Listen, mm. I'm really," and they're starting to build a relationship with God yeah. through you know watching a video that I did or something. And that's the most exciting thing for me is to know that you know that is taking place and that's all i really care about that's all i'm interested in is to be a fisher of men you know to just yeah go out yeah. there and speak about god and have you know anyone respond and i don't care how stupid i might look to people or you know people are like, he's talking about god and that's a load of rubbish i couldn't care less if i reach a million people and one of them responds i'm only interested in the one that responded i don't care about you know anything else that really is when people realize that the one thing that the world wants to hide from you is the truth about god and yeah. the truth that jesus died for you and all you have to do is believe that and you're going to heaven that god's done all the hard work for you mm -hmm. that's what jesus was doing there on the cross he was paying the price for your sins the enemy is desperate to obscure that from you because the enemy has been defeated totally utterly irrevocably defeated on the cross all he can do now is try and obscure that from you trying to keep you from finding out that jesus died for you and that's it that is the one truth that the enemy doesn't want you to find out about and that's why you'll never see me on the mainstream media you'll never because i would tell people about jesus if they let me on the tv that's what i'd do and so they'll never let me on there you know they can't yeah. win that debate so they don't have it no, no, but that, but, that, but then the nature of TV, it, it being what it is, and it's the same with the um, like movies and all of that. I mean, I think the, the all that's captured now. It's all captured. Yeah. Everything. I mean, I, I think I don't know about you, but I think it's unhealthy to watch certainly modern movies anyway. The, yeah. the, there's a there's a there's an evil to them, and it's the same with most stuff. I mean, again, I, I remember by Alistair, Give me a quick story. I remember yeah. watching Coronation Street, Coronation Street, back in the seventies. And it was harmless and it was family and it wasn't about adultery and it wasn't about murder and it wasn't about any of that. It was yeah. it was just it became unwatchable by the late 80s. And I have no idea what it's like since then. But I mean, you know, this is what this is. The, the, the tide creeps in, doesn't it? It's like a it toxic does. tide and across the things that people watch. So I, I, try, I, I watch very little TV. I watch Zilcho movies. What about you? Same. Yeah. Same, but you just you just literally as you're saying this, I'm just thinking to myself, I need to go in my house and smash that television so that my children don't start watching it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not worried about myself, but I do want worry that the all the world's influence comes in through that through that cursed box that's in my living room. And well, I'd love I'm... to just smash it, David. Yeah, but it What's comes in me? It comes in the phone as well, doesn't it? Yes. I, I, I did an yes. interview last week with a lady who survived sexual abuse as right, a child, right. and she's speaking up on behalf of, 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 of those that group of people. And she was telling me, like, you know, her great concern is, Alistair, that they've got these little computers now in their hands, kids from an early age, and yeah. that phone and the internet, which is so, so accessible, is, is a gateway to hell. And so that's a real problem as well. You know, when she was sort of saying that she thinks that government in some way should step in and limit it and good whatnot. Luck that. Good, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, exactly. But it's what she thinks. they going to brainwash you without those things. <laughs> that's right. Those, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, TV is bad enough. We were programmed by the TV. We're programmed yeah. by the movies. All the stuff in the movies is yeah. horrendous when you once you once you get to understand, like you know, yeah. Hollywood culture. Um, uh, but I think the phones as well are are, are yeah. very tricky. You know, it's a I great. Agree. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, you you see, like most of the phones have this logo on there, right? Yeah. Yeah. You ever ask yourself? This is an apple, right? I do, yeah, yeah. But which apple is it? Yeah. You yeah. see how it's got a little bite taken out of it? Yeah. Do you know of any apples that have a famous bite taken out of them? You know, there's not an I, accident. These I, I, symbols. Yeah. Do you know, Summers has the same logo. 
and summers you know the lingerie yeah, yeah, sex, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lust, yeah. lusty lusty lust they mm -hmm. got an apple with a bite taken out of it you know um this stuff is it's not an accident no. it's not an accident no. you know the the world is way more sinister than than people think you know um mm. and the stuff you're describing you're not wrong you know that that you know it comes to television it comes to the all this technology all this stuff that we have yeah. that, that makes people miserable people mm. are way more miserable now than they were before we had the, they call this thing a smartphone oh, yeah. like it makes you smart except that you can't do anything without it. This Makes phone might be smart, but you're a dummy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. People used to be smart. Now yeah. they're just, what do I do, phone? You know? Yeah. How do I get I mean, there, phone? If it, if it says smart before it, it's you definitely... Want it. you don't, you, yeah. It. You, don't want, you, you, you absolutely don't want it. Hey, Alistair, listen, we've gone through the allocated time and shot by nice. as I knew it would do very quickly. But Alistair, again, look, on behalf of everybody watching this and listening to this as well when we put out the podcast, I want to thank you, first of all, again, for being back with me. Really appreciate Thanks, that. Man. Appreciate it for all the all the stuff you're doing. You are doing God's work. So it's thank good. You, sir. And I think I, I think it is cutting it's cutting across and uh, helping wake more and more people up. And sometimes you know comedy, that's what's great about comedy. It 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 can do things. It can achieve things that maybe in other ways we can't achieve. So I think done done the way you do it, it's really really worthwhile. And you know Thanks. wish you every success with it. So you can follow Alistair. You can pick him up on his. Uh, his Twitter on his YouTube, he's still on YouTube amazingly, and uh, like myself, just about hanging on on Alistair Williams' band. <laughs> <laughs> Channel was available, yeah. so I took it. I know, I know. I mean, YouTube is such it's such a joke. Um, wow. but uh, you, you're on Rumble as well. Uh, you're on, um, I think you're on, uh, uh what's the other one I watch you on? Bit, bit shoot, I think you're on as well, aren't you? I don't really put much on Bit shoot, I put stuff on Rumble. Rumble, um, I think I put everything on Rumble. But yeah, to, yeah, you know. yeah. Which, of course, find we me could, well done. We could talk about Rumble, but that may be saved for another night because I'm not oh, sure, sure exactly that Rumble are the good guys either, Alistair. But at yeah. least, at least it's yeah. I don't know about you. I think if we're given these vehicles to use, we may as well use them. You know. Yeah. So even doing battle on Twitter, I'll do that because once they can, and eventually they'll take me away. I'm sure. Yeah, of course you might as well. What else are you going to do? Nothing. You got to do something. Exactly. No, exactly. Oh, thanks, so there you go. There, there's Alistair over in Rumble. Um, do support Alistair. Uh, if Alistair doing doing a show, go and support him at that there as well. Uh, we have to support each other, Alistair. I think in this movement we're in, um, yes, you know, we 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 need to be kind of united. So listen, folks. That's it from Alistair and myself live tonight. I'll see you guys in London town. Uh, bring a stab vest. I'll see you there on <laughs> Friday night. Uh, with Lawrence and Calvin and uh, for a night of further conversation. But from uh, from Alistair and myself, that's it, folks, and uh, see you later on. Bye, everybody. See you.